Good evening. We're continuing with our interviews of the uh, flight control team here at the Johnson Space Center. Our last interview is with the flight activities officer here in the shuttle control room, and now we're going to speak to their counterpart, Ops Plan, in the station room. This is Steve Rosenbaum. Thanks for joining us. So, I don't know if you saw our interview. Um, FAO, I know, is very busy, and you do the similar type of work with all the planning, and especially on this ship. Can you tell us a little bit about what your job entails? I'm an operations planner for the space station. Um, our planning group has a lot of different uh, things they do, but in a nutshell, um, we, we develop timelines um, that are utilized by the crew and uh, control centers worldwide and sort of, uh, we have it there for like a kind of globally choreographed execution of our timeline. It's a big schedule and that incorporates a lot of data from a lot of different people, a lot of different sources. And um, it's our job to coordinate with um, all of our systems counterparts here in Houston um, and our counterparts all over the world in Russia, Japan, um, Huntsville and Europe. Um, and they, they have planners also. Um, they do similar work to us as far as collaborating, coordinating with their systems folks um, and the program. And uh, we act as an integrator among all the control centers to bring all their plans together with our plans and to make sure there's no conflicts when we bring it all together. Um, during a shuttle mission, we add yet you know, another uh, control center to work with. So we, we have a lot of coordinating and a lot of uh, collaborating we do on a daily basis. So how does that work with the other with the other centers? Like you said, in Germany, Moscow, you have obviously these counterparts. Are you talking to them hourly or, you know, how frequent and how, how do you handle that? We talk to them throughout our shift. Um, you know, like everyone else, we sit there with the headsets on and um, we have uh, different conversations with, with them throughout the shift. Um, regarding the day we're executing and the following week. And um, I'm assuming for, as far as language barriers, everyone speaks English or how does that work? Everyone attempts to speak English. Um, when we deal with our Russian counterparts, uh, we use an interpreter, but um, with everyone else it's English. So it's, it's one of the interesting parts of the job to um, get to talk with people uh, that have different accents. Not, not only foreign accents, but also Alabama accents. Gotcha. Um, and I actually met you once in Moscow. Do you speak any Russian yourself? Or have you uh, picked up any of these other languages from this Noga, experience? Which means very little. Okay, that's more than me. So what do you like most about this job? Well, um, like I highlighted before, uh, working with international partners, um, it's a very, it's, it's a team environment. And that's one of the biggest things I like. Um, you know, we have a lot of different people to work with, a lot of different people to coordinate with. Um, and it's just a bonus dealing with international, um, our international counterparts. And one of the cool things of this job, of course, is the big picture that you're working with space and you're doing something in space. And that's, that's just, it's, you know, the, the really neat thing about this job. I think a position you're, like yours is one that people probably don't think about and certainly not one that people can go to college and study for. What was your path to, to getting to this position? Oh my. Um, well, to hit that first part, uh, it is a different position. People usually think of you know engineers sitting in front of systems things and we are kind of the coordinators, but pretty much everyone in our group um, is an engineer or science background of some sort. Uh, the closest engineering degree to our job is industrial engineering. Um, I did my master's at the University of Houston in industrial engineering, did my undergrad at University of Minnesota in aerospace engineering. Um, as far as getting here uh, is kind of a string of serendipitous events that uh, just landed me here and you know I, I can't see doing anything else right now. Speaking of, how long have you had this position? Um, well, I've been working here for almost 10 years. Um, I've been working as an ops planner for the last four. So it, it took about five years to work, uh, become ops planner. And, and we have a backroom of about um, 
five different positions and we have our planning is split up between long range and um, kind of real time which is a week out so we when we um, by the time we get up to the office planner we've done our rotations through all the different backroom positions in the long range planning as well as the backroom positions in the um, the short term on console planning Um, let's see, what do you find is the hardest part about your job? The hardest part of the job, let's see here. I don't know if I would consider anything hard, even though it might be stressful at times. It's the hard parts of the job are, is what makes it exciting. Um, and I guess that's when, when things, when crew members go along, when things break, uh, when things just don't happen as they should happen, that sends planners into a frenzy and, you know, it means immediate things for what the crew is doing the current day, the next day, the following day, even the next week. Um, so there's a lot of activity when things don't go as planned. It sounds like you kind of thrive on that situation. That's right. That's right. That's what makes planning exciting. I would think some people might think that planning, you know, it just sounds like you're coordinating and you're pulling these things together surface level, but really you do have to have a technical understanding of what's going on so that you can make sure all the different requirements are, are lining up. Is that fair? That's correct. Yeah. And, um, you know, there are a lot of different constraints put on the vehicle, uh, you know, communication, day night cycles, um, you know, how we get power, how we're oriented. There's a lot of those things that have to factor in and, you know, we're, we're not in charge of changing those things, but we have to be aware of who's doing what and when and how that interacts with all the other inputs. Um, so it, it, um, it's, it's kind of tricky sometimes to um, get a grasp of everything, especially the last, you know, the last decade we've been building this vehicle. So we keep adding, there's new things we need to know, new things we need to learn. Um, you know, technical details about um, new systems, new modules, new hardware. So we have to continue to stay up on that to be able to coordinate with all the system experts and, and that kind of thing. Right. Well, you, you mentioned your path here was a little bit indirect. Um, what kind of skills would you say make for a good ops planner? Um, definitely to be able to work within a team. Um, you know, a team is composed of a lot of different parts, you know, there's people who have to do the grunt work, people who have to uh, do the running around, the talking, the leading, there, there's a lot of different aspects um, of our organization. Uh, so the type of things that, you know, I guess people that thrive on tense situations maybe, I don't know if that's, that's the way to put it. Um, um, being able to juggle a lot of things. Uh, to be able to keep your eye on the big picture, but yet look at details, um, things like that. Gotcha. Well, it sounds like teamwork has been a reoccurring thing we've heard through all these interviews. So it sounds like everybody's on a good team. Yes, and that's that's a wonderful part of NASA here. That, you know, everyone, well, pretty much everyone has that that kind of dream of space, and it bond it you know bonds the team really well. And I think we all know at the end of the day that we all have the same common goal and that aspiration of space and exploration and um, that really unites us I think. Great. Well thank you so much for taking some time out of your really busy schedule to come and share your story with us. Thank you. Again that's Steven Rosenbaum who is the ops planner for the Orbit 1 and 3 team in the uh, station flight control room. This is Mission Control Houston.